Jason Reed works for ESPN's The Undefeated, and we thought we'd bring in Jace because he uh, covers the Washington Redskins. He's uh, at the airport now getting ready to head to the Combine. And this whole Kirk Cousins situation is fascinating right now, Jason, and I don't know if it comes to fruition with some kind of answer here at the Combine. What do you think happens here with Kirk Cousins? Well, Dan, I think tomorrow they'll, they'll apply the franchise tag, and once they do that, I think it's we're headed down a road where he's not going to be the quarterback here long term. And, and we've been coming to this point for some time now. You know, Cousins, Dan, has always wanted to be somewhere where he's wanted. And he's wanted the people at the highest levels of that organization to truly want him. And from the time he was a rookie, he's never felt truly appreciated here. And part of it was because he was never supposed to be the guy. They spent all the picks on Robert Griffin III, and Robert Griffin III was going to be the guy. Well, when that didn't work out, they had no really other alternatives, so they went with him, and he's proven he's a capable quarterback. Whatever anybody thinks of, is he a star, is he a top ten, he is a capable quarterback in the National Football League, but I don't think he's going to be here long term because of the way the situation has played out. Now, if you're Kirk Cousins, do you say, all right, apply the franchise tag, uh, and then do you somehow end up in San Francisco reunited with Kyle Shanahan? Or if you're Washington, is there a way that you facilitate a trade there and get a you know, high draft pick in return? Well, the, the problem, Dan, for the Redskins is that they really have no leverage here. Cousins, Cousins has all the leverage. He it's pretty much known in the industry that he wants to reunite with Kyle Shanahan, the guy who stood on the table who said, okay, I, I want to use a fourth round pick on him. Even after all the picks they used to get Griffin, he wants to be back with Kyle Shanahan. That's known throughout the industry. Kyle Shanahan has a six year deal. Kyle Shanahan can wait it out this year. If the Redskins want to keep cousins or if they ask for some ridiculous amount in the trade demand, and he can just be like, no, we'll wait it out. And you're not going to tag him next year when you'd have to pay him $35 million so I'll sign him next year, and I'll deal with all the other issues that I have with this roster with the San Francisco 49ers this year. So a trade would be the best scenario for the Redskins, but they don't have any leverage here. Jason is a senior NFL writer for ESPN's The Undefeated, a full uh, introduction for him. And uh, with that in mind, uh, the quarterbacks, though, that could be like Garoppolo, uh, I don't know if Cousins affects the draft, Tony Romo if he affects the draft, um, any, uh, any other quarterbacks here that you, you see that could shake up the first round? Well, the two guys you just mentioned obviously could in terms of whether or not, you know, there's an impact throughout the draft with any other guys moving. I mean, those two names, those are the ones that everybody's talking about. And as far as Romo goes, you know, you're looking at a situation, a landing spot for him where a team has to be in a really good position, not just in a good position from a talent standpoint, but in a good position with management, the structure, uh, you don't know how much Tony Romo has left. I mean, he's going to probably want to forget probably. He's going to want to go someplace where he's got a shot to win. So I, I think when you're talking about the draft, those are the two guys, and those are the, the ones that everyone's looking at right now. But could you could you see Romo playing for Washington? Dan, I I, I can't fathom that. I, I I also don't think it's a good fit for him. I don't think it's somewhere where he would really want to be. I mean, you look at this team, Dan. Their defense is a mess. They could lose both of their very good veteran wide receivers. Uh, there are questions about what's going on with their management structure. So I don't see that being a place he would want to go. And given his relationship with Jerry Jones, I don't think Jerry Jones would stick him somewhere where he doesn't want to be. And also, uh, looking at it from Jerry Jones' side, Dan, you really don't want him in the No, position. no. I mean, that's not, that's not what you that, – that's not an <laughs> ideal situation. So I, I, I don't see that happening. If I gave you over under number of quarterbacks taken in the first round at three and a half, you going over or under? I, I'd go over just because they're going to, I think they're going to be teams like the Washington Redskins who are still so unsettled at that position that you're going to take a shot. Now, when you look at. Wait, the, they're going to use the draft, a first round pick but, on a quarterback? Listen, at this point, at this point, I don't think you can rule anything out. I'm not saying they definitely would do that, but depending on how this cousin situation plays out, Man. if there's somebody they like up high based on their evaluation, I don't think I don't think they can. I don't think they will rule anything out, and I don't think they can rule anything out. How about the number of quarterbacks in the top ten? If I put it at one and a half quarterbacks taken in the top ten, 
Uh, I, I'd be more likely to agree with you on that. But but when we're talking overall draft, I think, you know, and, and Dan, you know this as well as anybody. At this point, heading into the combine, everything is on the table. Once we start getting closer to those days where you actually have to make the decision, then things start to change. But right now, I mean, you, you could you could throw out any number and, you know, going into uh, the first week of March. And, and I would have to say, well, maybe. Jace, uh, safe travels to the Combine. Have fun with your stopwatch. <laughs> Will do, man. Thanks a lot, Dan. All right, that's Jason Ree, uh, senior NFL writer for ESPN's The Undefeated. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience. <laughs>